Is on this message, I, I always try to leave, like not come up with any plans for this message until after the retreat on Sunday. And I just want to get a feel for what the Lord was doing, how he was moving at the retreat. And my takeaway from this weekend is I, I had a really good time. But one thing that was a little bit different than normal was how we were able to, during worship, there, was, there were a decent amount of times we would be worshiping and just resting in God's presence. And, and there were a few times when we had more people raising their hand and kind of more into it, but I feel like the general time, the general consensus of worship was us, like we were entered into worship. It wasn't like we're distracted or, or anything else, but it was just more of a in God's presence and, and just resting and waiting and, and just letting him minister to us. It was a good time. And I want to kind of spend some time going deeper into that and figuring out what that looks like. How do we continue that as a ministry? And so just a heads up, my home group, a few minutes of the first part of this might sound similar because we talked about this recently at home group, but it's just the first couple minutes as far as you know. But, um, but we often struggle, or at least I often struggle entering into the presence of God. I've been in this room here on a Tuesday night or previously when it was Thursday night and just distracted or apathetic. And, and so, but, but in those situations, I understand why I'm not entering into his presence. It's on me. Like I'm, I'm not putting in the effort. I'm not seeking him. You guys probably been there. You know, there's situations, times, things where you're just distracted. But there's other times when I'm like, man, I want to enter into God's presence. I need, I feel a need to enter into his presence. There's something going on, and yet I, I struggle. And I'm trying to figure that out. And we know, hopefully you know by this time, we have a need for God's presence. There are times in my day when I'm just overwhelmed, like I just have so much going on, where I stop and I just wait and I go, God, help me. Like, work through me, meet with me here. And I just pause and I pray because I know I need the Lord to be with me, what, what, whatever I'm facing. There are times when I'm counseling someone and, and the situation is clearly bigger than me and I need his wisdom. I need his presence to guide me in, in that conversation. So I do the same. I stop and I pause. What, what are some of the other things or situations you go through? And I'm going to take actual answers for this, so be ready. Where you need, you're like, I need the presence of God right now. I need to to feel him, or I need to know he's with me? What, what are things that, situations in your life that cause you to think that? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, when I'm having a, like, major disagreement with a family member. Yeah, just a fight, a disagreement. That's a, you know, it's not a fight, it's disagreement, you know. So, but there's tension, and maybe it's family member, maybe it's best friend, maybe it's boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, like, just a fight. You know, I need God to help me. Yeah. I'm in charge of my little brother, and there's like no way of escape. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're have you're responsible for something. In Maverick's case, his siblings, that could be overwhelming. I get that with my kids. It's like, God, what are you thinking? Uh, I need you. Help me. Right, Dustin, was your hand up? Uh, making big choices in your life, especially when it comes to like careers and life offering stuff. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, that's, that's the right response. I think too often we just make decisions and then afterwards ask God to bless them. But it's good when we recognize, man, this is a big deal. I need the Lord here. I need him with me. Not only do I want his wisdom to take the right choice, I need his presence and peace to know I've made that right choice. And I need his strength to see me through it. Right? We need him. Yeah. Cruz. Grievances. Grievances. Yeah. Grief. You know, where we're struggling, we're there, there's something that's hurting us. Yeah, Kennedy. Um, mental, health. mental health. Yeah, just battling a bunch of stuff. Alyssa. When bills are due. When bills are due. Yeah. God, I need your provision. Last one, Riley. Before, my YV shift. Before your YV shift. <laughs> yeah, doing any ministry. Hopefully, right, we ask the Lord, be with me. You know, protect me, use me. Got all of that. Well, Scripture gives us the passcode to entering into God's presence. 
It says in Psalm 100, verse 1 and 4, it says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. And what we see in those verses are thanksgiving and praise are keys, like literally keys. They give us access to the presence of God. And in Jerusalem, or in a lot of ancient cities, but Jerusalem especially, there, there was this outer wall, and there was a gate. And the gate is, you see throughout Scripture, that's where some, a lot of business was done. And people lived outside the gate, like a, a bunch of people, but they would come inside the city to do business, and a lot of people lived within the city gates. And whenever there was a time of, of concern or worry or need or war, they would run into the gates and people would close the gates. And so what we see here is Thanksgiving, that's how we enter the gates, God's gates. That's how we, we get into to a place where we can see the works of the Lord, what he's doing. But then it goes on and it says, and enter the courts, his courts with praise. And in Jerusalem, you would enter through the city gates and you would walk up through the town a little bit. And at the highest point, there was a temple. And the temple had this court. There's the outer court and the inner court. And that is where, you know, the Lord, his presence was in the temple. So we see here that the key to entering into his gates is thanksgiving. The key to seeing how the Lord operates and the works of his hand, we can see that. We get vision for those things through thanksgiving, but then we can, be, we can draw even nearer. We could go to where the Lord dwells. We can enter into his presence even deeper when it comes, when, when we praise him. Have you ever tried to enter into the presence of God through anger? doesn't really work, right? Like, God, meet with me. And you're, you're just screaming and, and uh, I'm sorry, Lewis. <laughs> uh, little baby back there. Uh, it doesn't work. We're closed off. Usually when we're angry, we're closed off to the Lord anyways because we want to see our, our resolution. We want to see our justice. We're not really seeking the Lord. We're seeking our own welfare. Anger isn't the key to entering into his presence. Apathy, you guys know that doesn't work. Like you don't accidentally stumble into God's presence. It's it's just not how it operates. But thanksgiving and praise puts us into a position to see and receive. Mark Hoffman puts it this way in one of his books. He says, as we move to God with an attitude of thanksgiving and praise, he moves towards us with his glorious presence and help. I love that. Psalm 22, 3 says that the Lord is enthroned upon the praises of his people, of Israel. And there's, there are a few different words in the English language that we use interchangeably, but when we separate them, it brings some clarity and understanding that's helpful. So I think about like envy and jealousy. There's a difference there. I particularly don't care about that difference because every time someone brings it up, it's in a like, you, they're not jealous, they're envious. And I'm like, I'm just, I don't care about it that much. But there are other things like shame and guilt that we've talked about here. It's, it's helpful to understand that guilt, I've done something wrong, can be really good and it helps you re- work towards a resolution. Shame, I, I am something wrong. That's, that's not really helpful, you know, unless you don't know the Lord, then you, it brings you to the Lord and he transforms you and then you shouldn't have any shame. But you see, we can do that. Thanksgiving and praise are two of those words that we interchange all the time, but it can be helpful to distinguish them. And Thanksgiving is largely focused on the things God gives, right? You can be thankful for food, for clothes, for possessions, for a job, for a paycheck, you know? You can, but praise often focuses on who God is, his character. And so we see even there that thanksgiving gives us access to his, his through the gates, but then praise brings us closer to him because praise is really talking about who God is. And few things can change your life like these two qualities. Praising and thanking God changes who we are. 
right? And this isn't anything new. You guys have heard plenty of stories, I'm sure, of, of someone. I, I read this one story of this young lady. She was struggling with different aspects of her life, and she decided, I'm going to take a picture of something I'm grateful for once a day. And, and she happened to post it. Um, that, and so she did that for 365 days, and it changed her life. Just finding one thing a day that she could post that, that was something she was grateful for. I've heard another story. I've heard of this happen a few times of uh, married couples who are struggling and fighting and on the brink of divorce. And one of, the, one of them decide, I'm going to praise my spouse for something once a day. And it changes their marriage completely. And sub, right? You guys have heard stories like that? In fact, let's do something. Close your eyes for a second. Think about someone that you are frustrated with. You're mad at. They drive you crazy. They get on your nerves. Now I want you to think of something about them that you can praise. Something about them that you're grateful for. Got it? You can open your eyes. Do you feel that anger simmer down a little bit or that wh whatever it is? Now, that's a little bit of a trick. Some of you might need to do ministry time later to make sure you're not holding any grudges and you can forgive some people. But the truth still stands when we think, I, I think about my wife. I've, I've been married for 12 years. Marriage is very refining. I test her patience all the time. She tests mine a good amount, right? And so we have these times when we're frustrated at one another. And often what I try to do is in those moments, think about something that I'm grateful for or something to praise her about. And it makes me sometimes begrudgingly less angry, right? And you're like, oh, I know I don't want to do this because I kind of like being angry, but I am grateful for her. It just changes us. Praise and thanksgiving does something in us. And it's a kingdom principle. And what that means is it's going to operate even in the secular world to some degree. But we're going to see its greatest strength when we apply it to our spiritual walks. And if you praise the Lord and develop a practice of really praising God, you're going to find yourself in his presence and operating and moving out of the strength of that more and more often. Let me give you some tips how to do this. You go into scripture and you find an attribute of God. An attribute is something about his character. So you might read uh, Psalm 147.5 where it says, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. And you see, God is omnipotent. Or if you were like me 20 years ago, he's omnipotent, right? Uh, and he's all-powerful. And so if we can dwell on that truth, and we could praise God. God, I thank you that in this world, with the current government, with the current crisis, with whether it's climate or with school or with finances or with whatever it is, you name whatever it is that in your life you, makes you feel powerless, we praise you, God, because you are omnipotent. That's how you praise the Lord. You find something about who he is, and you call it out. Let's read another one. one. Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. We read this at the retreat. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. And I say my purpose will stand. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. So you, praise God, because you don't, you're not all-knowing. Sorry to break it to you. And we can say, God, I thank you that you are all-knowing. I praise you that in my situation that I don't know, that I, I can't tell you how it's going to be resolved or where it's going to end up, that I can trust that you do. You guys want to do one more? Let's do um, Deuteronomy 7, 9. 
Know therefore that the Lord your God is good. Your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his covenant. God, I thank you that you're faithful. That's how you praise the Lord. In fact, if you're struggling to enter into the presence of God, or you're struggling to really understand who it is that you're following this Lord, I want to challenge you. You can go on the Bible app and find plans about the attributes of God. You could just start reading scripture and go through as we're reading John as a church. You find every time an attribute of God is is mentioned, underline it, and then praise God for it. Not only are you going to learn more about who it is that we're following, but it's going to give you access into his presence. And then remember, we need that to operate as he calls us to, to move and to have the peace that he calls us to walk in and to know, know his ways. And so the more we practice this, the more we're going to be strengthened with a strength that only comes through being in his presence. Now, let me tell you how thankfulness can get you there too. What's something that you have that you're really thankful for? So I don't know, my, let's say my car. Lord, I thank you for my Honda Fit. Wait, I call it Zippy. That's, I didn't name it. My, who I bought it for, they named it Zippy, and I just didn't feel right changing its name, and it has a lot of miles, and, you know? So, Lord, I thank you for this car. I thank you that it's still running, and please, Lord, help it run for a long, long time. Um, but then what, you, what I want to challenge you to do is take the possession that you're thankful for, and what attribute of God does that demonstrate? God, I thank you for Zippy, and I thank you that you are generous, that you provide. You are the God who provides, right? If you're extra fancy, you could say that the Hebrew name for that, Jehovah, and I, I can't remember that one. Um, is it Jireh? Yeah, I see, I get them all mixed up, man. Anyways, I digress. That's how we do it. That's how, so whatever it is you're thankful for, Tie it to an attribute. Whatever it is that God, you're reading, you see an attribute, praise him for it. And pretty soon you're going to find that you have access into the courts where the Lord dwells in a whole new way. And it's going to then change you because here's what's crazy. Praise is not only the key to get in, but praise is what lets you change. When you're sitting in the presence of God praising him, it praise is, acts like a sauna in, in where it heals. You know how they say like it helps cleanse you, right? Or, or praise could be like that session in an ice bath, if you're one of those crazy, where, where it restores you, it rejuvenates you. Or praise could be the thing, I know the, the people who climb Mount Everest and then they start struggling, they put them in this atmospheric tent. It could be that what praise is something that gets you into the presence of God, but then praise is something that allows you to change as you are in the presence of God, seeking him and lifting him up as he deserves. That is why the Lord calls us to praise him. He doesn't need it. He actually doesn't need anything you have to offer. He doesn't. He doesn't need you. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. All all of those things. And yet he chooses us. He, He chooses to work through us, but then get this. He calls us to come praise him, not because he's this egomaniac, right? Like, I'm going to create a whole bunch of people so I can, like, be puffed up with their praise. That's not how it works with God. He calls us to praise him because he knows that the closer we get to him, the more that we will be changed for the better. His call for you to praise him is for you, And then he gets the glory he deserves through it. But that's not it. Because praise completes the joy we find in God. Let me explain this one. You ever have like a really good meal? Some of you have put up with me a long time and you know that there's, I like, there's certain food places that I just got to tell people about. Right, we've been over Bon Thai here. I'm not gonna talk about that. I found this new donut place up in Encinitas, not VG's Donuts, which I still think is the best. I love VG's Donuts. This place is called Broad Street Donuts, and they have it's almost all gluten free for you hippies, all right? But they have these churro donuts, and it's like four. Now, here's the deal 
the, the best donut is a fresh donut, right? You just, if you go to Mary's and you just say, hey, what is the freshest thing you have? They'll be annoyed, but do it anyways because it's worth it because the best donut there is the one that's warm still. But this new donut place up in Cardiff, it has every donut they make fresh to order, every single one. And then they have these churro donuts that melt in your mouth. Oh. Now here's the deal. I enjoyed the donut very much, but my joy is made complete telling you about it. <laughs> I want, right? I want you to experience what I have come to know and celebrate and expectantly am excited to go back there again soon. The same was with people. You ever see someone and you're like, oh. uh, I'm thinking about my wife. And so be careful with this one. But I, I think of my wife, and I'm like, she's cute. But I want to tell her she's cute. Because when I tell her she's cute, my joy is complete. Like, it's not just that I get to experience her cuteness. But me calling it out, sharing it, that makes it complete. You guys with me? When you experience God, praising him makes your joy complete. And sometimes you get to praise him and you get to declare it to him. God, you are so good to me. Sometimes you got to tell other people. You got to tell the world. Like, look, I was this and, and now I'm so much better because the, the presence of God, his grace, it has changed me. Who I am is different. And in you telling them your joy, it's before something was lacking, you eat that churro donut and you just go home by yourself. Something's lacking. Something's missing there, right? But we experience God and then just, like, go home? No. He deserves to be praised. But when, and when we do praise him, our joy is made complete. Psalm 95, 2 says, Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. And let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Shout it out. We're going to be able to do that in just a few minutes. Psalm 97, 12. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. There's this rejoice. And if you've talked to, uh, heard Mark Hoff mean rejoicing means to recycle joy. You get this joy and then you, you relive it again and again. And that's what we get with the Lord. We get to rejoice in him. Psalm 107, 22, let them offer sacrifices with thanksgiving and tell his deeds in songs of joy. Hmm. Lastly, as we pursue God, as we run after him, as we seek him out, as we look to understand him better, we learn and experience just more reasons to praise him. It's what I love about God. You can read all of scripture and then read it again and then read it again. You will always find new ways to praise God. This life we have with God, it ju we, we, you will never reach a point where you fully understand and are like, well, I, I get it all. I know how to praise God and there's no more. I've listed all of the ways. How do I praise God? Let me count the ways. Right? You'll never finish counting. The depths of his grace and of his goodness and of his faithfulness, it's a well that never runs out. And so we get to praise God and get into his presence. And then we praise God more and, and he changes us. And then we, we praise God more and we tell people about it. And our joy is made even more complete and more full. But then as we do that, he moves in us and he changes us more and he uses us. And we have new reasons to praise him and new reasons to tell other people of his goodness. And as we do that, we enter into his presence again because we're praising him. And it just doesn't stop. And we win, and he wins. He gets what he deserves, and we become more and more and more like him.
have the band come up. So what I want to do tonight is I want to continue what we are doing at the retreat. And I want to praise the Lord. And I want to enter into his presence. I want to say this. When you're in the presence of God, you might respond a little bit different than the person next to you. When we listed out all the reasons why we want to be in God's presence, they were different. There were different things going on in your life. There are different needs you have. But what's cool is God's presence will meet all of those needs. It's whatever you need, going before the Lord and praising him is the antidote. Again, some of you are in places where you're like, I don't know that I want to praise God. And I want to challenge you to do it anyway. There are occasions when we get to praise God even when we don't feel like getting like wanting to praise God, and, and he still honors that. Some of you are, you're like, I'm down. I want to praise God, and I want to challenge you even then to really dwell and seek the Lord. What in this moment are you doing that you can help bring to mind so I can praise you properly? And some of you, this might be tough, I don't know where to start. Well, think about something you're thankful for. Or think about something about God, an attribute of his. And just dwell on it for a moment. Rest on it. We pray a lot for revival here. And the way revival comes is the Lord shows up powerfully. And, and revival changes everything it touches. Well, let's begin by asking God, come and bring revival to me. Come and change me. Make my joy complete. Help me find it in you. Whatever you need God, however you need God, bring it to him and enter into his presence, but do so by praising and thanking him for he's worthy. Will you guys stand up? I'm going to pray. <laughs> We're going to have the, the front open and you can kneel or you could stand however you want to enter into the Lord, you can. And I'm going to pray, but feel free to start moving that way now if you want. Lord, I thank you that you are available. Lord, so many people are so difficult to reach. If I wanted to meet with, with important figures in, in our country... Some of them, I, they're just, they would be unattainable. They would be unreachable. It, it couldn't happen. And yet you, Father, are here and available now more so, God, as we draw near to you, you draw near to us. As we come before you thankful and praising you as you deserve, God, I thank you that you respond to that praise by drawing near to us. You respond to that praise by changing us. You respond to that praise, Lord, by helping us understand the so many thousands and hundreds of thousands of reasons you deserve to be praised even more. So God, we thank you and we love you. God, we declare that you are good and you're faithful. You are sovereign and powerful. You are wise and all-knowing. You are compassionate and kind. We declare, God, that you are worthy of our prayer, praise and we repent for not giving you more of it. Lord, may you meet with us now. May your presence come and dwell in this place. Let's worship.